And Richard Dawkins, he shows it, he reveals it in the God delusion, where he says, and here's one of his main arguments, I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. If you say God created all this, you're going to have to ask who created God. And that's nonsense. And it is nonsense, but not in the way he thought. Because in the clip that we're about to watch, John Lennox exposes one of, if not the biggest misunderstandings that atheists have about believers and about Christians when it comes to God. And it's so basic, it's so core, but it needs to be addressed, it needs to be underscored, it needs to be highlighted. That's what we're going to do in this video. So with that being said, let's turn to John Lennox. I'll leave a few brief clarifying remarks along the way, mostly let him drive, and then I'll give you guys a ribbon on top at the end. With that being said, let's dive in. Imagine that we think the God of the Bible is a God of the gaps. He's just put there to explain until we get a scientific explanation. Then it dawned on me, if you believe that God's like that, you have to choose between God and science. Yeah. Why? Because that's the way you've defined God. You've defined God to be a non-explanation waiting for science to come along. So you, of course you have to choose. The God of the Bible is not a God of the gaps. And I often say to people, have you ever read the first line of the Bible? It goes like this. In the beginning, God created the bits of the universe we don't yet understand. And they all laugh, as you do, politely, thank you very much. Um, that's nonsense. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, which is grammatically a merism. Everything he created, the bits you do understand and the bits you don't. Moreover, think about ordinary life. The more I understand about art, the more I admire the genius of a Rembrandt, not the less. The more I understand of engineering, the more I admire the genius of a Henry Ford, not the less. And going up to the universe, the more I understand of the universe, the more I admire. This is Newton, the God who did it that way. They are making it sound as though it's a zero sum game and we explain things and explain things and explain things. And the more we explain things, the more we push out God. Because they believe in a, in a finite universe and they believe that that's all there is, they have this worldview in a sense. And, and the God of the Bible uh, is infinite, is eternal. In other words, these are ideas that are incompatible with a material worldview. I'm, I'm saying too much, uh, in it, so feel free to, to respond or not respond. But I, it strikes me as you're talking about this that I, I just hadn't thought of that before, that they have a very, very limited zero-sum game view of the universe. Well, that's true, but... What we're saying here is that they do not understand the biblical concept of God. See, Richard Dawkins, he says in one of his books that you've got scientific explanation, you've got the God explanation. They're both scientific type explanations. Right. That, to my mind, is profound misunderstanding. The God explanation is not even in the same category as the scientific explanation. And I'm going to move to that. And I said to him, much to his irritation, actually, on one occasion, the God you don't believe in, I don't believe in either. You know, you're tilting at a windmill, you see. And Richard Dawkins, he shows it, he reveals it in the God delusion, where he says... And here's one of his main arguments. I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. If you say God created all this, you're going to have to ask who created God. And that's nonsense. And it is nonsense, but not in the way he thought. Because if you ask who created God, you're assuming God is created. Well, I don't believe in a created God. We usually call them idols, and we don't need Dawkins to tell us they don't exist. You see, he's not addressing even the question if there's an eternal God. The Bible claims God is eternal. He's not created. So his question doesn't even apply, as I pointed out to him in that debate. But then I got the sting in the tail. I said, you, you believe the universe created you, don't you? So let me ask you your question, which you think is valid. Who created your creator? I'm still waiting for an answer, and that's 10 years ago. Don't you see how that logic 
works against itself. The real question is this, and I'll say this briefly and then get back to Linux, but in order for there to be anything, which obviously there is, there is existence, there is reality. Not only that, there's a complex, beautiful reality where we can have conversations like this across YouTube and where we are a species capable of thought at the level that is taking place in this video. But in order for there to be even anything, something must be eternal. The question is, what is that uncaused eternal thing? We're going to get into that on the back end of this video a little bit more, but for now, let's get back to Linux. If God created something, who created God? But that's still inside the yeah. creation. But it's actually logically very silly. I mean, it's, I used to get it in Russia, and I used to, it, it used to be very funny. They'd ask me this question, or children would ask it in Britain. I never heard it from professors. But in Russia, they'd say this, and I, I'd say to them, these were the old days, you know, when I used to go, they'd tell me, I say, what do you believe about the universe? They say, it's eternal. Oh, I said, isn't that interesting? You believe in an eternal universe, and yet your question, who created God, shows you cannot conceive of an eternal God. Why is that? How can you conceive of an eternal universe, not an eternal God? It's just totally inconsistent. I said, your problem is, you can't even think there might be an eternal reality that is a person you see. But it is a very silly objection, and to find it at the heart of his book. But I want to go back to the second main reason. I said Hawking and Dawkins' problem is they're dealing with the wrong concept of God by pitching God against science as an explanation. But now move to the science, and you can very easily see why Dawkins and the rest of them are completely wrong in suggesting God is the same kind of an explanation and therefore in competition with a scientific explanation. Very simple illustration. Why is the water boiling? Well, it's boiling because you've got heat energy from a gas flame being conducted through the bottom of a good Irish copper kettle and agitating the molecules of water. That's why it's boiling. Is it? It's boiling because I want a cup of tea. Now, people snigger at that and so on. Rightly so, because they see I'm being foolish. That the explanation in terms of heat energy, the scientific explanation, doesn't compete with the personal explanation of my desire for a cup of tea. In other words, both are correct. Both are correct. And you do not have to push one away and say, this no. is the correct one. Both it's are It's as if correct. to say, because I can explain this in terms of heat equations and physics, John Lennox doesn't exist. I mean, that is the level of the argument I, at the moment. I, I actually remember in grade school getting this materialistic worldview pushed on us. People would say, a teacher would say, uh, you're made of chemicals, and if I were to reduce those chemicals and sell them, you're worth about two dollars and eighty-six cents. This is in it's the gone up a bit, in the seventies. Anyway. In the seventies, yeah. You're but worth a bit more, Eric. In case you're thank feeling you. Inferior, yeah, now I'm worth, worth about seven more. or eight dollars. But, <laughs> but the thing is that that very idea is itself a lie. In other words, that, that a human being could be reduced to chemicals. Right. I am is, chemicals. This is, but you're but I'm more. more than chemicals. That's right. I'm both. This is reductionism again. Yeah. Now, Go back to my illustration. Even kids can see it. Yeah. I, I tell kids in, in school, you know, they're 10 or 11, and I say to them, look, here's a, a Ford Galaxy engine, motor, in an automobile. Now, I want to give you two explanations for that. One is automobile engineering and physics. The other is Henry Ford. Tell me which explanation is true. But, sir, you need both. They've got it. Why cannot some of these high-powered professors see that? I the think way they're I'm simply uncomfortable with the idea of God. I think they'll do anything to shy away from it because it really would blow their world to smithereens. It does. And it they does. are frightened. And I think that they're, you know, as I hear you talk, it strikes me that they and their ilk are on the run because science increasingly makes the case for God. The more science we know, this is the irony, and I think that this wouldn't have been true a hundred years ago, and so that worldview has carried on and on through the decades, but that the science of the last 40 or 50 years points us more and more to believe that there's a God, and I, and I think that they're willfully ignorant of that, because to, to acknowledge 
we haven't talked about the fine-tuned universe, but you couldn't know most of what we know about the fine-tuned universe 50 years ago. No. And the more we know about the universe, the more uncomfortable it makes someone who says, oh, there are plenty of planets out there with life on them and it's inevitable that life will, will evolve. Well, let's and come to that in two minutes. Yeah. The bottom line for the argument I've just given is this. And anybody can use this argument. I'm always looking, C.S. Lewis taught me this. If you can't explain your faith in God in words that people can understand, either you don't believe it or you don't understand it. That's the big slogan in front of my mind. Help people understand. Here's the bottom line. God no more competes with science as explanation of the universe than Henry Ford competes with the law of internal combustion as an explanation for the motor car engine. Anybody can understand that. We are used in life of having multi-level explanations. And the irony about the kettle boiling thing is that people have been drinking and enjoying tea for thousands of years before they understood about heat equations. It's the personal explanation, the agent explanation, that is usually the more important. Whether you're talking about an architect in a building, an author in a book, a chef and his recipe, a musician and his composition, a gardener and his garden, and there's many more examples that we could give. The point is that if you look inside of the created thing for the creator, you're asking for a kind of evidence that is just simply categorically wrong. It would be so silly to say, I don't see any metal here in the shape of an architect and therefore there's no architect for this building. I don't see any letters here, any ink on this page that reveal that there's an author, therefore there's no author to this book. I don't see any any uh, chef made out of noodles and sauce, so therefore there's no chef responsible for this recipe. I don't see anything in the treble clef or the bass clef in the shape of the musician and therefore there's no composer of this composition. And lastly, I don't see any gardener in the shape of a potato or a vegetable and therefore there's no gardener responsible for this garden. Do you see the fundamental fallacy in looking for the source for something in the shape of or in the design of or within the parameters of the created thing? This is the same mistake that is commonly made when people ask for and insist for evidence of God. The creator, the designer, the architect is not going to be made up of the thing that he has created. And it's the exact same thing of the God of the universe. But rather what you do is you look at design, beauty, intelligence, language, functionality, and you infer using logic to understand that all of these things are pointing to something outside of the system. And it's exactly the same thing with the universe itself. When you look at human rights, when you look at morality, when you look at human consciousness, the intelligibility of the universe with the human brain, when you look at all of these things working together, you understand that through inference, it is fully rational, in fact, far more rational to see that there is a mind behind this in the same way that there's a mind behind in any of the rest of these um, analogies that have been given. So with this being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that this to some extent clears up what I always see a, a, as an area where atheists and Christians are missing each other. And I think that at the very least, we should put the cards out on the table clearly, hopefully clear up this particular misunderstanding or misconception, and hopefully move forward because this is obviously just the tip of the iceberg. This is literally just a stepping stone. I want to be very clear that my intention with this channel is not just to create theist or not to simply make arguments that expose the reductionism of atheism. My ultimate goal is that I want people to know God at a personal level, to be able to say that I've tasted it and I've seen that the Lord is good because I believe that every single person watching this video was actually created by God and for God and that your true satisfaction and purpose are rooted in his reality, are rooted in him and that you can actually know him through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so obviously that's farther down the road. We're starting here at just the bedrock, at the rational level, at the logical level. But I want you guys to know that the this is not just a mere abstract conceptual realm for me. This is a matter of life and death, and these conversations are important, albeit incomplete, but they're worth talking about because, like I said, I view these types of conversations as stepping stones towards ultimate reality himself, which is God who is knowable and who 
loves you and who actually died for you. I just want to say lastly that if it is possible to have received a misconception or misunderstanding about something as basic as what Christians believe about God, isn't it possible that other things may have been lost in translation along the way? With all this being said, I really appreciate everyone who watches these videos and who is sort of along for this thought journey. You're all appreciated regardless of where you are currently at on your spiritual journey. Let's think together. Let's grow together. Let's pursue truth and wisdom together. With that being said, thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.